Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 184. Please turn to it. Page number 184, the very last problem that you see there in the first column, problem number 223. Here is the problem. We are given an equation here, 5 minus 6 over x, we are told equals x. And the question simply is, if that's the case, if this equation is to hold, then in that case, x will have how many possible values? Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply the entire equation by x. And if we multiply the entire equation by x, uh, we get 5x, and here we'll end up with 6, and here we'll end up with x squared. What we're doing here is, this is what we have, 5 minus 6 over x equals x squared is what we, is equals x is what we have and what we did was we multiplied every single term by x this this is and then times x and then times x and then this x drops out and we end up with 5x which is right here minus 6 because this x drops out minus 6 and then x squared I know I didn't have to do this part I don't know why I did it and now we bring we write basically this thing in a standard standard form a quadratic equation but there is not much in this problem there is not much in this problem at all because the question is simply asking us x will have how many possible values well it's a quadratic equation how many possible values did you expect it would have it's a second degree equation it will have two solutions it will have two solutions unless it turns out to be a case where it sums out, turns out to be some sort of a perfect square where some, something like x minus 7 equals uh, if we can find something like this but that's not going to be the case that's not going to be the case we'll find out in a second so bring the 5 to 5x to the other side so you get x squared minus 5x bring the 6 to the other side and what we're looking for what we're looking for what we're looking for are two numbers so that when we multiply them we get positive 6 so that we, when we multiply them so that when we multiply them, we get positive 6, and when we add them, we get negative 5. So that when we add them, we get negative 5. Can you think of two such numbers? Two numbers, one more time. Here, the product has to be 6, their product has to be 6, and when we add them, we get negative 5. And those are our roots, and those two numbers are negative 3 plus a negative 2. Negative 3 plus a negative 2 is going to give us negative 5. And negative 3, let's, let's put this properly because I did not. And negative 3 times a negative 2. Negative 3 times negative 2 is going to give us positive 5. As you can clearly see, these are two different roots. And therefore, it will have two. question was, x, x has how many possible values? The answer is, x has two possible values. What those two values are, we are not really interested in that. Nobody is asking, asking us what are the roots of this equation. They are simply asking us, how many roots does this equation have? The answer is 2. But we're going to finish it up anyway just for the hell of it. You understand? So just for learning purposes, we're going to finish it up. As far as the exam is concerned, we are, con we are done. If we were taking the real exam right now, we are done. The question was, how many roots does it have? The answer is 2. As you can clearly see. So 5x is going to be written as negative 3x and a negative 2x plus 6 equals 0. And now we look at these two terms and we can take out x as a common factor. X is the common factor here. Here is the X, here is the X. We take it out common, we end up with X minus 3. And now we look at these two, and we take out, we have a negative 2 here, a positive 6 here. We can take out negative 2 as a common factor, just like what we see here. We will end up with X, two, negative, two time, negative 2 times X is going to give us negative 2X, and then negative 2 times negative 3. Negative 2 times negative 3 is going to give us our positive 6, and that equals 0. And, there, and then here, we have x minus 3 here, we have x minus 3 here, we take that out as, as a common, and from here we are left with x, and from here we are left with negative 2, and that equals 0. Which tells us that either, either x minus 3 is equal to 0, or x minus 2 is equal to 0. Because the product is 0, which means one of these two quantities has to be 0, or perhaps they are both 0. If x minus 3 is equal to 0, that implies that x has to be positive 3, or, if x minus, x minus 2 is equal to 0, that implies that x is equal to positive 2. 
but this was a waste of time. Nobody, nobody was asking us what the roots are. We simply have to realize immediately that it will have two, two roots, right here, as we saw here. And those two roots are positive three and negative, uh, positive three and positive two, positive three and positive two. And we can put it back in there very quickly and actually verify it. Six over positive three. Let's do it here. Five minus six over positive three. 6 over 3 is 2, 5 minus 2 is 3, and that's exactly what we get here. This is our x right here. And similarly, 5 over 6 minus 2, 6 minus 2 is 3, 5 minus 3 is 2, and that's what we get here. You see? 5 minus x, 5 minus 6 over x equals x, and 5 minus 6 over x equals x. In, that, in this case, the x is equal to 3, here is 2. But anyway, the point here is that it has two roots. The question was, the question was, in this case, x has how many possible values? That's another way of saying how many how many roots does this equation have? The answer is two. It has two roots because it's a quadratic equation. It has two roots because it's a second power, second degree. Let's do the next one, shall we? 224. 224. One more time. One more time, just to point it out to you, this is not what we do in the real exam. In the real exam, we were done a long time ago. Right here, we were done. It will have two distinct roots. That's it. Twenty-four. In two twenty-four, we have a mixture. We have a seed mixture. We have a mixture X. We have a mixture X, which we are told is 40% red and 60% blue. And then we have a mixture Y, which we are told is 25% red and 75% blue. So far, so good. Then we combine the two mixtures. We take some of this and we take some of this and we combine them. We make a new mixture. So we have a mixture now, a mixture of x, x and y, we combine them two. We take some of this and we take some of that. And we combine them, we come up with a new mixture, x and y. x and y together, when we combine them, we told that it's such that it contains 30% red. The question simply is, x is, x, question simply is, x is, what percent x is what percent of total the final mixture that is when we combine we take a little bit of x mixture x we take a little bit of mixture y we put them together and it turns out that the final mixture that we have has a concentration of 30 percent red it is 30 percent red the question simply is what is the percentage x x is rather x is what percentage of the total mixture was it 50-50? Did we take half of that and half of that? Or was, did we have more of X or did we have more of Y? And if that's the case, how much, how much, how much of each did we have? What percentage, of, what percentage of the X did we take and what percentage of Y did we take to mix the two together? Was it 50-50? Was it 40-60? Was it 30-70? What was it? Again, listen, this is, an algebra, this is clearly an algebra, algebraic problem. This is clearly an algebraic problem. And therefore, as always, as always, if you have watched the previous videos, uh, the, the previous solutions, so we have come across algebraic problems many a times, and if you have watched those solutions, you know by now that because it's an algebraic problem, therefore we have two choices as to how we deal with it. One is to solve it as it is meant to be solved, which is to solve it using the algebra, to solve it in a conventional way, in an orthodox way, in a classical way, in a traditional way, in an academic way, in the algebraic way. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that because solving, trying to solve this problem in an algebraic way is going to be a real pain in the dirty air. Do you understand? So we're not going to do the algebra. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to use simple logic, and we're going to use simple logic and see what we can, see how far the simple logic takes us. Okay? Just think logically, rationally, calmly in the exam. You, as I always remind you, you must remain calm, collected, and uh, don't get worked up. Do you understand? Don't get worked up. Here's what here's what's going on. Here's the solution. Let's start out by asking ourselves what would have been a situation if we had 50-50 solutions. Uh, I'm going to, they call them mixtures, um, they call them mixtures. Once in a while you're going to hear me say solutions. Whether they are solutions 
whether they are solutions or mixtures really makes no difference at all. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna call them solutions because it, it comes out easier to me. Okay, now here's here's the here's the thing. Here's the logic. Okay, if we had if we had 50-50 solutions, if we had 50-50 solutions, because that's a good good place to start here. That's a logical place to start by asking ourselves, what would we have on our hand? What would we be dealing with? What would what would we had been dealing with if we had 50-50 solutions? And we go from there. If we had 50-50 solutions, in this case, in this case, the red would have been the red, the red would have been what what if it, what would have been a concentration of red if we had a 50-50 solution? If we had half of that and half of that, here this is 40% red, this guy is 25% red. So the, concent the concentration of red in the final solution, if you had a 50-50 solution, the concentration of red in the final solutions would be the average of the two concentrations. It will be the average of 40 and 25. Simple logic tells us that the average would have been, uh, the, the final concentration would have been the average. 40 plus 25 divided by 2, which is the same as 65 divided by 2, which is more than 30. Which is more than 30. On the other hand, we are told actually that the concentration of red is actually 30. We are told here, red is 30. Which means it is not 50-50. Now we ask ourselves, but if it's not 50-50, then which one is it? Do we, do we have we have more of one or the other? Which one which one do we have? We have more of X or do we have more of Y? Let's find out, shall we? See, this gives us more than 30%. We have only 30%. That tells us, this implies that we have, we have more of the, more of the what? This would have been more than 30% if we had 50-50, we would have had more than 30% red, we would have had 32%, 32.5% of red, but we have only 30% of red. So this implies that we have more of the diluted, diluted, or, or if you like, more of the, more of the weaker solution. Now the thing that you have to understand is that all of this thing that we are doing on the blackboard over a matter of 10 minutes, 10 minutes or 15 minutes is the exact same thing that you have to do in your mind within seconds in the exam. The, the thinking has to be there, do you understand? So because of the fact that final concentration is only 30%, we know that if we had 50-50 it would have been more than 30%, we have more of the weaker solution. But what do we mean by weaker solution or diluted solution? Which one, which one of these is a weaker solution? Well, this one has a 40% of red and this one has 25% of red, which means this is the weaker one. This is the weaker solution. Y is the weaker. We have more of Y. We have more than 50% of Y. We have, this implies, we have more than 50% of Y. If we have more than 50% of Y, that implies that, that implies that we must have, we must have less than 50% of X. Obviously, if we have more than 50% of Y, obviously we have less than 50% of X. The question was, X is what percent of total? Well, we just found out that X, percentage of X has to be less than 50%. Percentage of X has to be less than 50. Let's look at the answer choices. I need the room for the answer choices. Before can we squeeze answer choices here? Here, A, B, C, D, and E. Answer choice E says, Answer choice E says that x is 66 and 2 thirds percent. We just found out x must be less than 50 percent. x has to be less than 50 percent because we have we have more of the weaker solutions. We have more of the weaker solutions. The final the final concentration of the red was 30 percent. If we had 50-50, it would have been well. I'm repeating myself, but you got the idea. So it's not 66 percent. It is less than 50 percent. D says 50 percent. That's not it. We do not have we do not have a 50-50 solutions. We have something less than 50%, which tells us, we don't know what the answer is, but simple logic tells us tells us that the correct answer, whatever it is, it's got to be either A, B, or C. Are you still with me in the story? Very good. Because the plot is going to thicken a little bit, you understand? And I did. I need the room, so I have, I'm going to erase everything, so I'm going to give you a second, actually. That's it, we're almost done, we're going to pick up speed here. So remember, answer is either A, B, or C. Answer is either A, B, or C. Now what do we do? 
What do we do now? What we do now is something again we have done it many many times. The nature of this question is such that the answers are numerical. Obviously they are all numerical. When the answers are numerical, they are arranged numerically in order, ascending order or descending order. And we know the correct answer, whatever it is, has got to be one of those three. Question is, which one do we try out first? We, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do trial and error. We're going to do trial and error. We're going to pick one value from here, put it back in here and see if it works. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. The question is, how many times will we end up trying if we did the trial and error method here? Possibilities are A, B, and C. How many times do you suppose we'll end up trying if we were to try pick one answer choice and put it back in the problem and see if it works, how many times do you suppose we'll end up trying? The answer is only once. Only once. We have to try only once. What we do is we start out with happy medium. Okay, listen carefully. We start out with happy medium. If B works, fine, we're done. If B does not work, it should tell us whether we need more of the weaker solution or less of the weaker solutions. If B does not work, in other words, if B does not work, we should be able to tell whether we need more of X or less of X. If we need more of X, the answer is C. Because what does C say? C says 40%. And if B turns out to be too strong, we need less of X, then the answer is A. How many times did we try? Only once. Let's try it, shall we? Enough of the talk, let's try it. So here's what we're going to do. B says, B says 33%. It should say 33 and one third percent. It does say 33 and one third percent, which makes a difference. It's exactly one third. 33 and one third percent. So that's what we're going to do. Okay? Watch here. Oh, here we go. So our solution, our solution, will have 300 units. Think it in terms of units. 300 units, and x is one third. X is. Question was x is what percentage of the total? We are pretending that x is one third. Well, if x is one third, then the x is going to be 100 then y is going to be 200. Are you with me? I'm going to pick up speed a little bit. Okay, I say that every time and I never do that. If x is 100, we are told that x, in, in, x, in x, red is 40%. If x is 100, then red has to be 40, because it is 40%. Similarly, if y is 200, y, we are told, is 25% red. y is 25% red. 25% of 200, 25% of 200 is 50. It is 25%. So how much red do we have? We have 40 plus 50. We have, we have red is 40. We have 40 plus 50. And how much is the total? Total is 300 units. We end up with 90 over 300, which is same as 9 over 30, which is same as 3 over 10, which is same as 30% what do you know? What do you know? 30% is exactly what the problem tells us the final concentration of X was. The problem tells us that in the final, rather not the final concentration, in the final solution they tell us, in the final solution they tell us that the concentration of red was 30%. There it is. The final solution was made up of one part X and two parts Y. The answer is B. That's it. As far as the exam is concerned, we are done. Now, just to satisfy your curiosity, we're going to do out. We're going to do out. Let's let's do out C. Let's do, let's do C and see what it works out to be. I'm not going to raise everything actually. We're going to do the C right here. C is 40. Remember, C is 40 percent. So we're going to quickly do C on this side. Now, because C is 40 percent, we're not going to have solution of 300. Let's have a solution of. Let's have solution of 1,000. Okay, now this is this is x and this is y. We're doing we're do, trying out answer choice C, which was 40%. If it's 40%, then x has to be 400, y has to be 600. Red we are told, red we are told is 25%. In in x, red we are or oh, rather 40%. What is 40%? What is what is 40%? What is 40% of 400? 10% of 400 is 40. 40% 40 is going to be 160. And now we have 600 of y. Y, 25% is 25% of y is red. What is 25% of 600? 25% of 600 is one quarter of 600. One quarter of 600 is 150. So how much do we have? I'm, I'm going to put a demarcation here. This is this is getting this is getting quite complicated because I don't want to erase anything. Listen, we can erase all of this thing. We can erase all of this thing. We know this equals 30%. So let's erase all of this thing. 
so we can have a clear okay same exact same exact routine as before so we have red over the total red is 160 plus 150 over 1000 160 plus 150 oh Jesus over 1000 where did this 1000 come from we just made it up we made it up 1000 units why 1000 units and why 300 units here we pretended we pretended uh, that the final solution was 300 units because the, the ratio was one third and two thirds so it's easy, easy to divide 300 into one third and two third here we put down 1000 because we have 40 percent and 60 percent the, the answer choice that we're working with answer choice c tells us that x is 40 percent 40 percent right here we could have used 100 also i prefer i prefer 1000 i don't know why Anyway, 160 plus 150 is 310 over 1000, which is 31%. Which of course is wrong, because the final solution contains 30%. Concentration of red in the final solution is 30%, not 31%. 31% is a bit too strong. We have too much of X. We have too much of X. We have 40% X, that's too much, which is why, because we have 40% X, which is why the final concentration of red went up to 31%. We want 30%. 30% right here. 30% is going to happen when we take one part x and two parts y. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.